Okay, now I'm going to show you how to balance equations with polyatomic ions. Now remember, polyatomic ions are uh, molecules that have a charge. So NO3, or nitrate, is a polyatomic ion. And you can find these in your uh, chemistry tables. Um, so in this particular reaction, we have copper nitrate. So since it is um, nitrate is an ion, it can react with a ionic compound. Um, or you can react with a metal to form an ionic compound. So it can form copper nit nitrate, and then this can uh, uh, interconvert with aluminum nitrate. And this is a type of reaction might, that might happen um, in solution. So if you uh, mix uh, one of these substances in water and it dissolves, then it may uh, react to form the other substance. Um, uh, so when this happens, the polyatomic ion tends to stay together. So it's nitrate on both sides of the equation, but it's complexed with a different metal. So when we're uh, balancing these types of equations, we treat the nitrate as if it was just another element in the equation. It's a, a, treated as a unit, basically. And again, when we're balancing these, we're going to, for the time being, ignore the uh, plain elements, aluminum and copper, just because those are easiest to deal with. So we'll deal with ones which are a little bit harder, which are our two compounds. Um, so uh, if we look at this, again, we have this thing where we have a two to three ratio. So um, we've got um, two copper nitrate, or two nitrates. We're just gonna look at the nitrate. We're not gonna worry about the copper yet. We've got two nitrates uh, on the uh, left side of the equations. So, I mean, that's the subscript. So we're going to need three of those to balance it out with um, the uh, right side because on that side there are three nitrates and we need two of those. So two times three is six. So we have six nitrates in the reactants and six in the products. Uh, so now that we have that balanced, then we need to look at our um, aluminum and copper. Um, and it doesn't matter which one you start with. So I'll start with aluminum. If we look at aluminum, um, right now we have two aluminums on, in the uh, product side, and aluminum nitrate. So we're going to need two aluminum atoms on the uh, product or on the reactant side. And then we can look at copper. There's three in copper nitrate. So we're going to be, need three uh, copper atoms in the product side. Okay, now we'll look at another example of a polyatomic ion. Um, the hydroxide ion, or OH. Now, if we look at this equation, it looks like the OH is disappearing, but in reality, you can think of this as it's actually just hiding in water. So water is um, hydrogen with, uh, or oxygen is attached to hydrogen, uh, has two hydrogen atoms attached. So you can think of this as an H and an OH. So it's essentially um, an H attached to a hydroxide ion. Um, so we can write down that the water is composed of the, these two elements, 1H and 1OH. Um, so now we'll go ahead, um, after mentioning that, I'm going to go ahead and balance this. Um, and I'm going to leave the apolytomic ion for last just because I think it's a little bit more confusing. And so we'll start um, for, with uh, bromine. So bromine, there's... Um, if we look on the product side, it's B calcium bromide with a Br2. There's two of them. So that means on the product, on the reactant side, we're going to need two HBr. And I'm also going to write down that one so that I know that I've um, already taken this um, compound into account, at least in this first round of um, uh, the balancing process. Um, it may end up staying one or we might end up changing it, but we'll leave it, we'll write it there for now. Um, so we've got uh, the uh, bromine taken care of. So now I'm going to look at calcium hydroxide. Um, and I'm, since we have one calcium and calcium bromide, I'm going to write one right here. Um, now uh, is where we're going to uh, balance the uh, hydroxide ion. So there's um, we have OH2, and there's two of them. Um, so to do that, um, within water, there's two OHs, so we're going to write down two, and there's also one H. So, um, uh, but there's uh, we have since we have two waters, that's two H's there, and then two in hydrogen bromide. Uh, so I know that's pretty confusing thinking of it that way, and I emphasized it because 
um, this is basically how the hydrogen react, uh, the hydroxide ion forms and breaks down. And um, this reaction is pretty common, so it's good to look at it this way. But we should also just check our work by counting each atom to make sure we've gotten it right. So we've got um, on the uh, reactant side, we've got um, eight. Uh, oh, let's count the bromines first. So we've got two bromines on the reactants, uh, only in hydrogen bromide, and two in the products, Br2 and calcium bromide. Um, and then let's look at the hydrogen. So we, on the product or on the reactant side, there's two in HBr, and then there's um, also two in calcium hydroxide. Um, so that's four total. And if we look at the product side, um, it's the hydrogen's only in water. So that's but there's uh, two of them. So two times two is four. So there's four hydrogens on the product side as well. Uh, now we'll look at uh, calcium, there's one in the reactants and one in the products, so that's balanced. Um, and then we're going to look at oxygen. And we've got, um, there's uh, two in calcium hydroxide, um, so that's two total in the reactants. And then we've got two water molecules and each has an oxygen, so that's two total in the products. So this is a balanced equation. Now I'll give you some tips for balancing chemical equations. First of all, use a pencil because you'll be doing a lot of erasing. Uh, sometimes you uh, start balancing it and then realize that you have to adjust the um, amount um, based on uh, after you look at all of the elements in the reaction. Uh, two, start with elements in compounds on both sides of the arrows um, before uh, pure elements just because those are a little bit harder to do and then it's easy at the very end to balance pure elements that are left. Uh, three, finish with elements with more than one compound on the same, that are in more than one compound on the same side of the arrow and I'm going to get to some examples of that happening. Uh, four, polyatomic ions can often but not always be treated as a unit so in other words, they often um, swap places with um, another, uh, for example, metal ion, if it's a negatively charged polyatomic ion. Um, however, there are reactions where uh, polyatomic ions are formed or broken, so this is not always the case. But it's in case in many types of reactions that polyatomic ions participate in. And five, if you end up with a fraction of, a, of an element or molecule during balancing, uh, multiply all the coefficients to end up with whole numbers. And again, this is something I'm going to show an example of in a couple minutes. Now, I just mentioned uh, that the uh, same element can sometimes appear in uh, more than one reactant or product, and uh, combustion is a classic example of that. So we have oxygen as a reactant, and it ends up in two different products. It ends up in carbon dioxide and in water. Uh, so basically, uh, according to the rules I just gave, um, since oxygen is two products, we're going to leave it till last, um, just because it's kind of hard to balance, and we're going to easier stuff first. So we can start with either carbon or hydrogen, and I decided to start with carbon. So we have C8. H18. Uh, this is octane, which is a primary component of gasoline. Um, so it's got eight carbons in it. So that means um, we're going to produce eight CO2. Notice that um, although oxygen is in two different uh, products, we only have carb uh, carbon and uh, carbon dioxide or CO2. So that is balanced. Um, so now we're going to balance the hydrogen. We've got 18 hydrogens in uh, octane. So, and then uh, with water, it's H2, so we're going to need uh, 9, so 9 times 2 is 18, so we're going to need 9 waters. So now we're ready to uh, balance the oxygens, and so to do this, we need to figure out um, the total number of oxygen in the products. So we have 8 CO2s, and each one of those has 2 oxygens, so that's 8 times 2, and then there's 9 oxygens in water. So that's 8 times 2 plus 9. That's 25 oxygens total. Um, but we have O2. It's not oxygen. It's O2. So we're essentially going to need um, half of 25 or 12.5 uh, 
to balance this the way it's written. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and write that in the equation. We don't want to leave it like that, but but um, this is a way to at least look at what uh, kind of the process of balancing it. So we've got 12.5 oxygens, and um, then I just wrote 1C8H12 so that um, we remember that, that we did balance that, and it is indeed 1. Uh, so this is a balanced equation, but we can't have hot half an oxygen molecule. It's going to be a whole molecule. So to make everything a whole mo uh, number ratio, um, we multiply all the coefficients by, by 2. And so uh, when we double everything, we get two, two octanes, 25 oxygen molecules, um, react to form 16 carbon dioxides, and 18 water molecules. Okay, we're now going to balance a double uh, displacement reaction. Remember, in this type of reaction, two different components of a compound swap places. So we have a nitrate um, polyatomic ion um, swapping places with uh, chlorine. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, uh, in this reaction, the polyatomic ion, as I mentioned, is often the case. In, um, it is going to uh, remain a polyatomic ion. And it's easy enough to see that this is the case because there's an, a nitrate on the product side and a nitrate on the reactant side. So indeed, it has not disappeared and it was not formed. It is, uh, st uh, stays a unit. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and balance this. Now, everything is a compound, um, so it doesn't matter too much um, what we start with first. Um, so I guess what I do, I'll do is I'll start with the nitrate ion. Um, so we've got two NO3 in the um, uh, lead nitrate or PBNO32. There's two nitrate units. So we're going to put a two in front of lithium nitrate. Um, so now that means we have two lithiums. So we're going to go ahead and write two um, lithium chlorides. And now we have to um, look at the chlorine. So there's two chlorines in the reactants. That's PBCl2, so that's two in the product. And then um, there is one lead in the reactants and one lead in the products. So at this point, this equation is balanced. Um, so again, I encourage you to uh, check your work. So we've got um, one lead um, on the reactants, one in the products, um, two nitrates in the reactants, two in the products two lithium in the reactants, two in the products, and two chlorine in the reactants and products. So just make sure you go through because it's easy to uh, make mistakes when you're doing these.